to start off, let's look at what is Docker. So Docker is a Linux-based program. So it runs on Linux, and this doesn't necessarily mean you need to know Linux. We're going to see how that works, because this course is actually geared towards people that are working on Windows and also Mac OS X and may not have the Linux background because we will be working with a command line. The reason why is because the command line is used so much. To go into what is Docker, it creates instances of environments and these are configured environments. So you can take these environments that you create and then use them on other platforms. You can save their state and spin them up very quickly and use them again. So there's these concepts of images and containers that Docker uses, which we're about to explore how those work exactly. So let's look at the structure of Docker. Basically, you have a Linux machine, and then inside of the Linux machine, you have Docker running. So Docker makes use of Linux to create its containers and actually do what it does so well. Inside of Docker, you have an image. An image is, if you're familiar with the programming concept of a class, then you can create an instance of a class. The image is like a class. It's a template. When you create an instance of the image, that is called a container, which is like an instance of the class, and it becomes an object. So the container is what maps off of the image. So you can have your database, your web application, and configurations for those inside of the image. Those are driven from a Docker file. So the flow would kind of go Docker file, image, container. Now whenever you create the instance of the container, Docker gives you several things. It gives you the file structure necessary for operating inside the container. You also have networking available to you as well. And you don't have to create just one container. Several can be created off of this one image. Then you can have other images that you can create more containers from those inside of your Docker installation. And whenever you're ready, you can save state on a container, move the container somewhere else, spin it up and that state is going to be restored. So these containers then can be, for example, a web application and it also has its database, its web server, and they can communicate out to the world. And with working on Windows and working on Mac OS X, we're going to see how do you access the port numbers, the URLs, the IP addresses that are supplied by Docker. Because if you're working just on Linux, then you'll get an IP address and you can use that. But when you're working on another system that's hosting Linux, you've got to go through basically a virtual machine and have your networking mapped back from Linux through the virtual machine and into Mac OS X or Windows. So we're going to see how that works in a future lesson. But here's the overall structure of what will be happening with Docker. Again, this is working in Linux, and we're going to see some common commands that you will use. So you don't really need to know Linux. You do need to know a few common commands to make use of showing images, creating images, and then creating instances of those images. And then from there, you might want to check, well, what are the images that are running? In other words, what are the containers that are running? What are the containers that are not running? You might want to delete containers. You may want to pull an image that someone else has created from Docker Hub. So there are images for different operating systems, for example, that you can pull. You can pull a WordPress image from the Hub and different database images. So they're all kind of pre-configured and basically ready to go. You just pull the image, create, and then spin up your container from the image and that is pretty quick and then you'll have basically the pieces that you can put together for connecting up maybe an, a WordPress container and then connect it to a database container. So there's a lot of different things you can do, a lot of flexibility. So let's move forward and looking at how 
this is going to work with in Windows and also Mac.